to solve the MCQs. Uh, question number 11, we have that um, one of the values of variable x is 233.356. The solution rounded off to two significant figures is what? So here, <clears throat> the question is about rounding off any number to given number of significant figures. So uh, we will have to first identify which are the significant figures and then we have to round off accordingly. In the given number, all the digits are non-zero, 2, 3, 3 and then 3, 5, 6. So we have six significant figures given, but we have to round it to only two significant figures. So we can think about it step by step. Right now we have six. If I wanted to round off till five significant figures, then looking at the last figure, which is six, it is more than five. So then if I write the five significant figures, it will be 233.3 and then the five I have to add one, which will become six. And then the last six, I will drop it. So this is for five significant figures. What if they had asked for four significant figures? Then let me look at 233 point. We have three five. So the last digit would have been five. And then the three, we have to round it up to four. So up to four significant figures, it is 233.4. Then for three significant figures, I will look at the previous digit which is 3. The fourth significant figure is 3 which is less than 5. I will just drop it and the answer is 233. So 233 is when we have 3 significant figures. But now I want to round off only till 2 significant figures. So the digit before that is 3. Uh, but this is no longer in my decimals. It is 233. The unit digit is 3. So to the nearest tens, it is closer to 30 rather than 40. So to round off to two significant figures, I will write 230. So option D is correct. Then uh, question number 12 is about in the figure, uh, AB is X, BC is Y and X minus Y is 7. Then area of triangle ABC is 30 centimeters square, length of AC they are asking. Okay, uh, it is a right angle triangle ABC. So when they are talking about area of the triangle, I can look at half into the product of the perpendicular size, which is your base and height AB into BC. So which is given as 30. So half of AB is X and BC is Y that is 30. Now I can reduce it to one variable because they have given relation that x minus y equals to 7. So I can say that y is equal to 7 minus x. Not 7 minus x, x minus 7. y equals to x minus 7. Then I will have half into x into x minus 7 that is 30. So I have if I move the 2 on the other side, 30 into 2 is 60. x square minus 7x equal to 60. Or x square minus 7x minus 60 equal to 0. Then if I try to split the middle term to factorize, I can split minus 7x as x square um, minus 12x plus 5x minus 60 equal to 0. So then x into x minus 12 plus 5 into x minus 12 equal to 0. So I will have x minus 12 equal to 0 or x plus 5 equal to 0. So that gives me x equal to 12 or x equal to minus 5. But uh, x is a length which has to be positive. So I will take x equal to 12. Now if x equal to 12, that's not my answer. They're asking the length of side AC. Then uh, y will be uh, 12 minus 7 is 5. So I have a right angle triangle with sides 5, 12 and according to your Pythagorean triplet 5, 12, 13. You can also apply your normal Pythagoras theorem 
to find that the hypotenuse is 13 centimeters. So a AC length is option C 13 centimeter. Moving ahead, we have a question on continued proportion. If P, Q and R are in continued proportion, then which option can be correct? So if we look at what is the continued proportion, we will have P by Q equals to Q by R. Or in other words, Q square must be equal to PR. So we need to check in which of the options this will be true. If I look at the first option, P is to Q equal to P is to R. But that is not correct because P is to Q is actually Q is to R, not P is to R. Then second option, Q is to R equals to P square is to Q square. But if I look at Q by R, that is actually same as P by Q. So Q is to R should have been equal to P is to Q, not P square is to Q square. So that is also not correct. Option number C, P is to Q square equal to R is to P square. So if I write in the fraction way, P by Q square equal to R by P square. If I cross multiply, P cube equal to Q square R or Q square is equal to P cube by R. But I wanted to have Q square as P R, not P cube by R. So option C is also not right, which leaves us option D. And if you anyway want to verify why option D is correct, I can write P is to R as P by R, that is equal to P square by Q square. If I cross multiply, I get P Q square equals to uh, P square R. And if I move P from the left to the right, I will have Q square, Q square equals to P square R by P, which will give me P R. And Q square is actually equal to P R, which is correct. So option D has to be the right option. Okay, next question is from mensuration. Uh, it's about a cylinder. So diameter to height ratio is 3 is to 5. Actual diameter is 6 centimeter. Then the curved surface area is what? So if I look at the ratio diameter to height, it is 3 is to 5. Now diameter actually is 6. So it is same as 6 is to what? So if I look at it in a proportion way, it should be 6 is to 10. 3 is to 5 is same as 6 is to 10. So height is 10 centimeter diameter is 6 which gives me radius half of that 3 centimeter okay so i have my radius and height of the cylinder curved surface area formula is 2 pi r h which is 2 into pi into r is 3 centimeter height is 10 centimeter so 3 into 10 30 into 2 60 pi centimeter square which is option b 60 pi Question number 15, if this polynomial is completely divisible by 2x plus a and the quotient is equal to x square minus 1, then one of the values of a. In this question, I could have applied my factor theorem and then I would be able to get an equation with variable a, but uh, that will take a lot of time. So here there is a very direct relation that if I am dividing the cubic polynomial with 2x plus a, quotient is x square minus 1 and it's completely divisible so remainder is 0. So I can say that the cubic polynomial, your dividend is equal to divisor multiplied by quotient. So divisor multiplied by quotient is 2x plus a multiplied by x square minus 1. If I do this multiplication, I get 2x cube uh, minus uh, ax square sorry plus ax square minus 2x minus a and then because this has to be the dividend which is already given if i compare here i had plus 3x square here i have plus ax square and here i have minus 3 here i have minus a so they have to match so therefore a has to be equal to 3 which is option d Moving ahead, question 16, a uh, cubic polynomial is given and which of the following is a factor of the given polynomial so that the value of k is 2. So I can just write the polynomial as x cube plus 5x square minus 2x minus 24. So this is my uh, cubic polynomial given. I need to find out out of these four 
which one is a factor so i can pick each one of these options as a divisor and then apply factor theorem to test whether they are a factor or not so if i substitute for x plus 2 x equal to minus 2 that's the value of x for is for which x plus 2 is 0 so if i substitute x equal to minus 2 in my dividend and then evaluate to see whether I'm getting 0 or not. I will see that x equal to minus 2 in this polynomial does not give me 0. So x plus 2 cannot be a factor. If I test for x minus 3, I have to look at x equal to 3. If I test for x equal to 3 in the dividend, again I will say, I, I will see that the value is not 0. So x minus 3 cannot be a factor. If I look at x plus 4, I have to look at x equal to minus 4 and if I substitute that in my um, cubic polynomial I will find something like minus 4 cube plus 5 into minus 4 square minus 2 into minus 4 minus 20 minus 4 cube is minus 64 plus 5 into minus 4 square which is 5 into 16 it is plus 80 minus 2 into minus 4 is plus 8 minus 24 then if I add 80 plus 8 88 minus 64 minus 24 is minus 88 so this is 0 so that's the reason why uh, x plus 4 will be a factor of the polynomial moving ahead question 17 if I have two matrices a and b then which multiplication is possible is it a b or is it b a so for that, I will need to look into the order of the matrices. So matrix A has only one row and two columns. So the order of matrix A is 1 by 2. Matrix B has two rows and only one column. So the order is 2 by 1. So if I'm looking at AB, is AB possible? So I have 1 by 2 and 2 by 1. Number of columns and number of rows is equal. So AB is possible. If I look at whether BA is possible, my order of BA, B is 2 by 1, order of A is 1 by 2. Then again, if I see number of columns and number of rows will match, so BA is also possible. So actually both matrices AB and BA are possible. But there is another option saying that AB and BA are possible and AB equals to BA. Two matrices will be equal only when they have the same order and the same corresponding elements. But the problem is that for AB matrix, the resulting product AB will be of order 1 by 1. It will be a 1 by 1 matrix with a single element. And the product BA will result in a 2 by 2 matrix. So I cannot say that a 1 by 1 and a 2 by 2 matrices are equal. So option D is wrong only option C is correct. The answer key to this question in the document is incorrect. The correct answer is option C. Looking at question number 18, we have matrix A given such that A square is 0, 0, 0, 0, which is a null matrix. Then what is this value of K? So for finding A square, I know that I have to multiply A again with A. Only then I get A square. Then I apply my knowledge of matrix multiplication 2 by 2 and 2 by 2 will result in again another 2 by 2 matrix which has four elements so first row first column if i look at it 6 into 6 36 9 into minus 4 is minus 36 first element is 0 okay then first row second column first row second column 6 into 9 is 54 plus 9 into k is plus 9k Second row, first column, element minus 4 into minus, minus 4 into 6 is minus 24. Then uh, k into minus 4 is minus 4k. And then second row, second column is minus 4 into 9, which is minus 36. And uh, k into k plus k square. So this results in 0, 54 plus 9k minus 24 minus 4k minus 36 plus k square now all the elements has to be equal to 0 so if i take this element 54 plus 9k equal to 0 then i get 9k equal to 
minus 54 so k will be equal to minus 54 by 9 which is minus 6 if i take the other one minus 24 minus 4k equal to 0 then again i get k equal to minus 6 and if i look at minus 36 plus minus 36 plus k square equal to 0 i get k can be either plus or minus 6 but then i need a value of k for which all the elements has to be 0 so for these elements k has to be equal to minus 6 plus 6 will not help me get all the element 0 so the answer here should be k equal to minus 6 which is option b then question number 19 sum of n terms of an ap is given by this formula then the third term of the series is what so we know that sum of n terms means sum of the first number second number third number till the nth number so if they're asking for the third term third term is same as sum of first three numbers minus sum of first two numbers if i look at the difference between these two sums that difference gives me the third term so s3 i will get when i substitute n equal to 3 in this expression so 3 square is 9 9 minus 3 is 6 then if i substitute n equal to 2 i get 2 square which is 4 minus 2 it is 2 so the third term is 6 minus 2 which is 4 option b is correct then question number 20 which of the following is not a geometric progression if i look at the first option all the numbers i'm getting by multiplying the previous number by 3 so it has a common ratio of 3 so it is a gp then option b all the elements are same so if i multiply the previous number by 1 i get the next number so here common ratio is 1 it is also a gp option number c if i look at the pattern i get the next number by multiplying with minus 2 and that's how i am getting the series so common ratio minus 2 it is also a gp but if i look at 204080 if i look at the ratio of consecutive terms second term by first term 0 by 2 is 0 but if i look at third term by second term 4 by 0 is not defined so i cannot have a definite common ratio for the uh, last uh, series so i will say that this is not a gp so the answer is option d not a gp